Hi guys and welcome back to another What's For Dinner Wednesday. If you're new here, my name is Jennifer and tonight I'm going to be sharing with you a recipe that is a copycat recipe from one of my favorite places, Disneyland. And it's called Loaded Baked Potato Soup. So stay with me and I'll show you how to make it. The family fudge, the family fudge, they are mostly sweet but full of nuts. Loaded baked potato soup. This soup can be found at a restaurant called the Carnation Cafe. And the Carnation Cafe is located on Main Street, USA in Disneyland, one of my favorite places. Okay, so here's what you need to make the Disneyland version of a loaded baked potato soup. Number one, I have potatoes. I'm gonna be using four russet potatoes and four red potatoes. And then I have one pound of bacon. I'm gonna be using two cups of chicken broth, four cups of milk. You know, I have to tell you though, the Disneyland version calls for four cups of heavy cream, and I just can't do that today. I'm gonna to be using four cups of regular milk instead, but if you wanna use four cups of heavy cream, I'm sure it will be delicious. I'm gonna be using salt and pepper. I'm gonna be using two carrots, and these are pretty small carrots. And then I'm gonna be using celery, about three quarters of a cup. I'm gonna need some flour to thicken this up. I'm gonna be using a gluten-free variety, but you use any kind that you prefer. About one quarter cup of flour. And then, to garnish this, I'm going to be having some sour cream, some cheese on top, and some chives. All right, time to peel and chop the potatoes. But before I do that, I'm gonna take my bacon and I'm gonna stick it in the freezer for a few minutes. And when I do that, it's gonna make it easier to cut later. All right, so I'm gonna to get to peeling these potatoes. So I actually found this recipe on the Disney website itself. So it's not like a secret recipe or anything. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave that recipe up on the familyfudge.com if you wanna go over there and print it out if you'd like to try this recipe yourself. So I suppose you could leave the skins on these potatoes, but since I'm following Disneyland's recipe, uh, they said to peel the potatoes, and I'm, so I'm gonna do that. I want it to be as close to how they make it as possible. Okay, so I finally finished peeling all those potatoes. Not a hard thing to do, but definitely takes a little bit of time. So, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and chop these into, I don't know, a little bit bigger than bite-sized pieces. They don't have to be that small, because when it's all done cooking, I'm gonna use my immersion blender to smooth it all out. So chunky is fine. This restaurant, the Carnation Cafe, is super cute. If you were to enter Disneyland and walk down Main Street, it's gonna be on your left-hand side before you get to the castle. And you'll know you'll see it if you can see the red and white striped umbrellas. Apparently, it used to be only outside dining under the umbrellas. But recently, during a remodel, they put some indoor seating as well. And I, let me give you a tip, I actually prefer sitting inside instead of outside, and I'll tell you why. It's, it seems less crowded, it's more intimate, and inside is really cute. It's very um, themed really well. I'll pop up some pictures if I can find them. So John and I have eaten here several times. I really like their uh, fried pickles. Their fried pickles are delicious. Also, their cheeseburgers are yummy. If you're going there in the morning, you can get the famous Mickey waffle there. It is really good. And one of the interesting things about this restaurant as well is their head chef. He has quite a following. He's kind of famous. Apparently, well, his name is Oscar Martinez, and he's worked there for, I think, 60 years he's worked at this restaurant. And I've actually met him he is super nice and friendly. If you get to Disney in time for rope drop in the morning, you have to walk down Main Street and then rope drop is right in front of the castle. You have to pass by the restaurant and Oscar is always out in front waving to everybody who's rushing by. He's always there, he's like a Disneyland staple. 
Super nice guy. If you're ever there and have a chance to meet him, I would recommend it. So I have all of my potatoes chopped up and they're hanging out with some, in some water so that they don't turn brown. And I'm gonna go ahead and set these aside. And before I get chopping on my other vegetables, I'm gonna start my bacon cooking. All right, so here's my one pound of bacon. I pulled it from the freezer so it's a little bit um, more solidified, which makes it easier for me to actually cut it. I'm not gonna be chopping my bacon, I'm gonna be cut, cutting it. And I'm gonna be cutting it with my kitchen scissors directly into the pot that it's going to get cooked in. So just like that, directly into my pot. I'm gonna put this on the stove on a medium heat until the bacon is nice and crispy. Then I'm going to remove the bacon. So you can probably hear that bacon over there. It is super loud, but it's cooking away. And now I'm gonna chop my celery, my carrots, and my onion. And I'm gonna use my vegetable chopper. It's just gonna make it a lot faster. But if you have a regular knife, <laughs> that works totally fine. Using the chopper made it so easy, but I do have to warn you guys, if you get one of these, they are super sharp. I really cut my finger last time I used it, so be careful. My bacon is all cooked, nice and crispy. I removed it with a uh, slotted spoon, and now it's draining on some paper towels. You can see I have quite a bit of grease left over. I don't need that much grease. I'm gonna go ahead and remove all of it except for about a couple tablespoons. Now I'm kind of surprised it doesn't tell you to put the flour in at this point to make like a roux. What it actually tells you to do is to throw in your onions and carrots and celery and to cook those in the grease next. And I'm gonna go ahead and follow the recipe. I'm just gonna cook this for a few minutes until the onions are translucent. And while those are cooking, I'm gonna drain the water out of these potatoes. And look, they didn't turn brown. It worked. The recipe says to add the potatoes in here and cook them for about four minutes. Now the recipe says to whisk in flour, stir constantly over low heat, until the flour is cooked and the mixture is thickened. So I think that's kind of weird that it would say that with the stuff already in the pan, because I would think that you would add the flour to the grease and not to the potatoes, but that's what the recipe says, so that's what I'm gonna do. So in goes my flour. I'm gonna stir that around. And we're gonna cook it for another five to seven minutes. So now I'm gonna add two cups of chicken broth. Now I'm gonna add half of this bacon that we cooked up earlier. I'm gonna reserve the other half to top the soup later as a garnish. Next up is the salt and pepper. Now, there is a lot of bacon in here, so I'm gonna start off with just a quarter teaspoon of salt and an eighth teaspoon of pepper. Definitely salt and pepper it to your taste. This is gonna simmer away for about 25 minutes or until the potatoes are cooked all the way through. Okay, I tested the potatoes and they are cooked all the way through. So I'm gonna turn this off, let it cool down a bit, and then I'm going to mash up some of the potatoes. Now I have an immersion blender, so that's what I'm gonna use, but you could use a potato masher if you'd like. That would work just fine. Okay, so I got most of the lumps out. Now I'm gonna add the milk, and I'm only gonna add enough to make it the consistency that I like. I'm gonna start with about two cups of milk. You could use half and half. So it's still a little on the thick side. I think maybe one more cup of milk, or cream if you're using cream. So now it's at a consistency that I like. I like it a little bit thicker for my little kids, 
so it's not so messy, but feel free to add more if you'd like. I gave it a little taste and I think it needs a lot more salt. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and add like half a teaspoon of salt, give it another taste and see where we're at. And maybe another quarter teaspoon of pepper. Okay guys, so here is the finished soup. I went ahead and added quite a bit of salt to mine to get it to where I like it. And I also added a couple of tablesp tablespoons of sour cream because I was using the milk instead of the heavy cream. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you how they would build it from here because you gotta have all the toppings, you know? So at Disneyland, they would take a plate and then they would put a doily. But you know what? I'm all out of doilies. So then you take your bowl. And I think you might be able to order this in a cup too. I'm not quite sure. So we're going to fill up our bowl. Just like that. Ooh, steamy. And then we have all of our toppings. So we're going to start with a good amount of cheese. Now this is just shredded up cheddar Monterey Jack cheese. There we go. Plenty of cheese on top of there. They do not skimp on the cheese. And then we have the reserved bacon. And they are they put a lot of bacon on this. Quite a bit of bacon. And then there comes a drizzle of sour cream. And then the last part is chives. All right, there you have it. There's the copycat Disneyland loaded baked potato soup from the Carnation Cafe. I think it's cooled down enough. I can give it a try. So good. I hope you guys love it. There is Disneyland's loaded baked potato soup. Let me know in the comments down below what your favorite copycat recipe is. And if you're a Disney fan like me, let me know in the comments down below if any of the other parks have a similar dish. Can you find this dish at Disney World? I don't know, let me know. Anyway, I hope you're having an awesome Wednesday. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.